Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and in this brief video, I will be talking about the so-called Occidentalism. Someone had asked me to cover that in one of my videos, and what I'm going to suggest is that Occidentalism, as used by the conservative scholars in the United States and elsewhere, cannot exist, okay? And, and I'll give you my reasons for it. First of all, these responses come in response to Edward Said's Orientalism. And basically, the argue, argument is that just as the Europeans created stereotypes of the natives in the colonial uh, situations, the natives did that too, and hence they are being Occidental. What these people absolutely misread in Said's Orientalism is that to be an Orientalist, it's not just your individual utterance, but, but that you have the power to be at a place, you have the power to record it, you have the power to then publish that recording, make it a norm, and then make it a larger view of a huge segment of human population. So there is a lot of power involved in Orientalism. Orientalism cannot be possible without a discourse, and that discourse relies on the power of the colonial infrastructure, its administrations, its universities, its power to actually be there. There is no corresponding discourse in the post-colonies or during the colonial times, so they might stereotype the West or stereotype America, but it does not form Occidentalism, because they neither have the material power nor the symbolic reach to make it into a norm, right? To make it a universal norm and then impose it, teach it at universities, make it so that it becomes part of the thinking process of intellectuals and individuals. So whenever anyone uses the term Occidentalism, I can promise you that they have not read Edward Said carefully, not even his introduction. I'm not even talking about the book. And they are thinking of stereotyping by the natives, by African people, Asian people, of Europeans and Americans, and just taking that stereotyping as a discourse of Occidentalism, right? And that is a misreading and misconception Right? And when you read carefully into it, you know that it is not, it doesn't have that kind of systemic discursive weight. It's just like racism when people blame others for reverse racism. What they're, what they're combining is individual prejudice and racism. Racism is not just an individual opinion. It is a larger structure of inequalities in which people from the dominant group internalize and then express their views of the minorities. And then it has legal structures, it has economic structures that play against those in a minority ethnic or racist, ra racial identity. So just like that, as the reverse racism arg argument is flawed and faulty. Similarly, Occidentalism as something that counters the hegemonic project of the West and can be accounted for just as Saeed accounts for Orientalism is kind of a really very silly way of trying to come up with this idea that we were not the only ones who did that. They did it too. But did they have the power to come and sit in Paris, run it, right, and then write about it? Did they have the power to do it to Britain? Did any colonial nation ever has enough power to take over territory and the resources, then produce knowledge about it, and then perpetuate that knowledge through institutions, through civil servants, through universities, through literary journals? That's what it took for Orientalism to take hold and become a normative mode of thinking the Orient, right? There is no corresponding power, knowledge, nexus when you invoke the term 
Occidentalism. So that's why, as a scholar of post-colonial studies, I've never taken the concept really seriously, and I don't think so that if it is being offered as a counter discourse to Orientalism, you know, I don't think so it has any, you know, weight behind it, nor does it sound to me a really convincing response to Orientalism. So these are some of my views on the so-called Occidentalism. You can read the books and see how thin their argument is. But by and large, if you take out power and the role of discourses in these kind of global interactions, then there is nothing such as Occidentalism, and it doesn't exist, it cannot exist, unless the post-colonies have the power to reshape the discourse. That's all. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you next time. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, so that you get timely notifications. Thank you f for your time, and as always, peace and love.